Hey guys, Steve Petrato here with Horizon Hobby and along with my good friend James Haley from the Blade team, one of our senior designers and category managers with the company. We have an exciting new announcement today. This is the Blade Theory X airframe kit. Now, you've known Blade for being a convenience brand, one that brings you products that are ready to fly, but this is the first airframe that we've brought to market and it is a full carbon fiber airframe designed specifically for FPV racing. So James, let's jump right into this. Um, you and I have been working on this for a long time along with the rest of the team. You, you drew it with some of our input and it's, it's become this really cool project within the team. Um, I even flew it at the regional qualifiers out in, uh, in Phoenix a little while ago and we got third place with it. This frame is very competitive. So let's jump into some of the key features. What are some of your favorite things about this frame? Uh, I like that the frame's you know, pretty versatile depending on your skill level to build. I mean, the ESCs go on the arms kind of standard. But being able to stack everything vertically kind of keeps everything centralized and, you know, not have a lot of wires, you know, yeah. hanging yeah. out there. The build looks very clean. I, I mean, I, I know that when I'm flying this, it doesn't really feel top heavy at all. With the yeah. battery mounted below, it gives you this very smooth feeling. I never feel like it's, it's an awkward shape. It does look tall, but with the weight, yeah. how it's centralized, it doesn't feel it at all. Yeah. And the key with, you know, with, if you have a longer frame, you know, when you're going at a 45 degree angle or even higher, you know, when you're going through the gate, you have a very tall presence. Mm -hmm. You know, having it stacked vertically, centralized, you you know, you're keeping all that presence still in the same plane. So you're not adding any height to actually, you know, going through the gate. Sure. And I need all the help I can get yeah. you know, to get through the gates. One of the things I like the most is really the camera tilt on this model. Um, this is an un unlimited, really, camera tilt. So talk about kind of how that works. Yeah, so it just mounts on the standoff here. Um, you know, the standoff here it uses the same standoffs for. Um, you know this tray here as well as any standoff here across the top sure um, there are 35 millimeter standoffs they're a little tall uh, but the idea there is to allow for any type of video transmitter um, also your skill level of building so you know if you don't have a really condensed you know hard soldered setup you can always you know use connectors if you want and it'll be a little taller but that way it allows everybody to do something out of the box um, if you're really skilled and you want a lower profile like you have here, you can always do a 25 or even a 20 millimeter standoff, keep the height even lower, uh, which will also increase, you know, your durability, you know, and, you know, a pretty heavy crash. Yeah. So, and also on, I noticed on the one on our left, we have our uh, GoPro session 3D printed mount. Um, this frame was designed to carry both the GoPro session and the GoPro hero three and four, um, which is kind of a unique thing, I think, because we, you see X frames like this in the market and either they're designed for a camera on top and they're kind of heavy or they're designed for racing with no camera on top. But with this, the way you have this design, it doesn't add any really major weight to the frame, and you can run with or without it, and it doesn't add any extra wind block or you know, yeah. you know, force on the model. Yeah, I mean, that's the one thing I always hated. You know, is if you wanted to run like a smaller X frame that was made for you know merely racing, you couldn't really you know go record with it, which yeah. is always you know part of the fun is being able to share what you're doing. Sure. Also, you know, if you wanted to actually go out and just do some freestyle and fly around trees or something. You know, you couldn't really do it and add a camera and have it protected well. Yeah. So what we've done, guys, and this is pretty cool for Blades. First time we've done this is we've went to Thingiverse. If you're not familiar with Thingiverse.com, it's a great place for uh, three, free 3D printed CAD files. So James has uploaded the session mount yep. and also a 3D printed skirt, right, that goes around the bottom of the yep. frame to protect your electronics from dirt, grass. As you can see, there's plenty of grass on these as we were racing them recently. Um, but those are nice pieces. They're totally free. The CAD up there online go to thingiverse under blade rc you can check those out uh right there so it's pretty cool but that gopro session mount we've printed it with uh, tough ink right so yep. it's yeah so it's, it's really very flexible pliable. but you know it's very durable at the same time it allows you to slide the camera in there mm -hmm. you know it'll stay in there the new version actually that we uploaded has a little tabs to keep it in there even in a hard hit yeah so you don't have to use a separate strap or anything yeah so really nice you don't have to buy it if you've got a 3d printer and you know someone who does yep. actually just download that file or, or send it to them it's really nice yep um, so again, th this model was designed for competitive FPV racing or really just fun flying if you're just into building. And it fits the standard flight controller, so Naze, SPF3, Lux, KISS flight controller, all those different ones, along with any, really, any size uh, VTX. We run yep. a 200 milliwatt. I think we've been running our Spectrum v uh, VTX in these. And they do have a 90 degree, I'm going to spin this model around so you can see it here, but we've got a, a hole in the carbon back here for a 90 degree SMA. And that's going to allow you to run your video transmitter you yep. know, antenna straight up out of the model, not coming out the back. It's away from the props. You're not going to cut it. And right? with the GoPro mount there, with the standoff, you know, it's pretty well guarded. So, you know, if you're running the shorter style antennas, 
uh, like the IB Crazies or the Triumphs, you know, sure. it's well protected, especially with the GoPro mount. I mean, it helps a lot. In that. Yeah. And, and one thing I kind of found that last weekend racing in Phoenix is with my transponder, um, without the camera, it's actually a really perfect perch for the transponder on top of the of the quad here without the camera. Yep. So I just have a, a, a female servo lead in there, I plug my transponder into that, and then I just kind of electrical tape the transponder to it and it carried it perfectly. Yep. It's not awkward, a lot of times these small frames are so hard to get a transponder on for racing, um, this one just, it, it's kind of an all purpose. That that little, those little ears I like to call them really help a lot yep. in just mounting everything else. Yeah, it makes a you know a nice platform to use anything yeah tell me about the uh, the carbon so what kind of thickness and yeah, durability so, that's a big thing yep this. so we're using just standard four millimeter carbon on the main frame uh, for the center section there um, working out really well for us obviously if you crash hard enough anything can break but you know in a race scenario we're having really good luck with it I dinged it again we're good though. It's got your standard mounting bolts for your flight control as well as the bolts out there for the center section. It'll accept 16 or 19 millimeter motors. Uh, they're all slotted um, so you know you can rotate your motor however you need to sure. to get the wires down there. Um, on the 5 inch version we're running mainly 20 FBSCs so um, the new blade version, ready mades, anything will pretty much fit on there uh, pretty well. Um, and you know obviously just tape or electrical tape kind of the standard yeah, the standard the standard yep. race quad build kit always includes some electrical tape you don't need electrical tape i got it <laughs> uh then the top center section is actually uh the two camera side plates are two millimeter uh carbon um we actually originally had a cool logo in there didn't work out broke really quickly so <laughs> it's a solid piece um and having really good luck with that it's just got tabs that lock into this center section here uh you know there's no left or right so you have a nut with a screw and that'll sit just like that yeah. Um, standoff. And, and, right and that there. design is it has been used in the past in other models, and I think we really kind of nailed it down. Where it's a tight fit, it's thick carbon on thick carbon, and with it all bolted together, that thing is rigid. I mean, it's very, very short. Yeah, we um, the first version actually, kind of one of the prototypes, had a little bit looser tolerances, yeah. and it could pull the carbon out really easily. So we tightened up everything. It's actually a little bit of a struggle to get it together, mm -hmm. but once you have it together, uh, we're having really good luck with it. Um, same thing with this bottom section one thing to note is if you're you know where your antenna comes out on your sma on your vtx you know you can run it this way or you can run it that way yes, depending on which way over. and the same thing with the uh the xt60 yep. connector there so if you have the pdb you know which way your positive and negative come out on your pdb you can always switch the frame so that way your wires aren't crossing you can have them as short as possible yeah um one thing to note here on the camera mount um that's your mount for your camera so it does use the ring on yep. the lens uh, which makes it universal for all the cameras out there um, and then like I said any of the standoffs it just bolts right on there yeah so it's really easy to take your camera off if you need to focus it and try yeah. to, instead of trying to focus it in the model yeah I was gonna say this we were racing at daytime and at nighttime it within the same day and I ran a daytime camera setup and a nighttime camera setup and the guys that had the longer frames had to take their whole top tray off and they spent 15 minutes changing the camera and I was done in like a minute and a half because it's two screws on the side unplug put a new camera in and go so if you have that situation or you blow up a camera or you just need to focus one it's so nice it's yep. such an easy setup and like you said for change of camera angle just two screws on the side yeah. loosen them up um or if you don't even want to change your camera angle if you know you're really particular and have it the way you set you can just take the two screws right off the front and have it you know another camera with those mounts already on there and be able yeah. to swap it yeah and I, I i prefer the 2.1 lens i know you prefer the 2.8 lens yep. Um, I like to run the hot higher camera angle because the 2.1 you can see a lot more. Um, so you've got the range. I mean, I can run 60 degrees of camera angle or more if I wanted to, and yeah. it, it runs it just fine. And the power system on board these things these days, as you guys know, is just insane. So this frame handles it very well. It's nice. Yep. So is there anything else that we missed here? I don't think so. I think that's it, guys. This is one of the one of the coolest frames that I've had the pleasure of working on with James, and I'm I'm glad that we we're able to bring it to market under Blade through Horizon through all of our dealers. So you guys will see it in the store soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Thanks, guys. Take care.